Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm here with Steve Foxy of National Highways. Project Director Steve, we're in a field here <laughs> outside Gloucestershire and we're doing the missing link. It's the A417 missing link. But what is this missing link all about and why am I stood in a field? So, the missing link. The missing link has been planned for over five years now through various planning cases and was finally granted its DCO last year. What the missing link is, is effectively removing the bottleneck on the A417 round by the air balloon pub. So it's, it's colloquially known as the air balloon scheme. It's known as the missing link because it's been missing for a hell of a long time. <laughs> the bottleneck is a safety, real safety concern on the network. It's, as time goes on now, the amount of vehicles that are using the road, the congestion that builds up, it's also a big environmental concern for us. So what has National Highways have done with the government backing is we're going to build a new road that is be three lanes coming up the hill, two lanes going down the hill, and then at the top part of the road leading across down to the Golden Heart pub, that will be a new bypass effectively round there to take that away. And then the existing road will be detrunked off the network and returned as a walking route, bridleway, cycling path. So we're improving the local area and the local environment. And this is really interesting, folks, because the environmental impact of this road is quite severe because I've been this morning getting here in a big traffic jam. I've also seen lorries crawling up the road, causing that problem. And obviously, with all the traffic jam, emissions are going everywhere. People aren't getting to work. The economic impact of having this gridlock and this missing link is really important to get rid of, isn't it? It is, it is. It, it's a choke on the local economy. Yeah. Fundamentally though, putting the money to one side, it is a real, real safety risk. We have far too many incidents, accidents, fatalities on this section. It just needs to be improved in a really sympathetic way, given the beauty of the environment that we're, we're working in. So it's been done, it's an environmentally led enhancement to the network. And I'm really glad you said that about safety. We always think about safety in construction, about people with hard hats like this. And this is my visitor one, folks, so everyone can see that I'm a visitor, not a worker on the job site here. But we always talk about it in physicality terms, in plant and equipment terms. But actually what we're doing here is we're doing that job safely to actually keep people safe in their cars whilst they're on the network, aren't we now? Yeah, I mean, the new road when it's opened and the plan is we will open the top section in late 2025, early 26. Okay. And then the section up the hill, all being well, will be 2027. It will segregate vehicles in opposite directions. As you go down the hill, one of the biggest improvements we're doing is we're doing a hard concrete safety barrier right down the hill. At the moment, you drive down that hill and you're faced with articulated vehicles coming towards you. It is quite unnerving. It, yeah. It's, and it, you know, it, it, some people cope with it, some people don't. The section over the top, it's up and down. There is a microclimate here. I think at the top of the hill, we're nearly a thousand feet above sea level. It can be four degrees colder up here than down at the bottom of the hill. Ice, snow, all the issues that go with that. Vehicle recoveries, if we have a breakdown, you know, it impedes the flow of emergency services vehicles. It's just an all round win-win. And I think what's really exciting for me is the reason I'm still with Steve here for my first video in what is going to be an epic series that I'm going to be doing with you and the team at Kia, who are the main contractor of it, is we're going to discover how a road is built and the things that we have to do. So we're starting here in a field with a digger, but it's digging not the road structure. This is doing something that is the first thing that we're having to do on site. Tell me a little bit about it. So what they're doing here is they're stripping off the topsoil yep. to allow us to make a spoil mound then to strip off the subsoil. Yeah. So we can take all that away and then we're putting balancing ponds in for the drainage over, over your shoulder because just off to my left is the air balloon pub and the access to the new road will be further just off to my left. So the whole thing is being done in the, in, the, in the existing area as sympathetically as we can possibly make it. The intention is that very, very little material will actually go off site. So we're keeping down vehicle movements, we're keeping down the carbon, keeping down traffic on the local networks. It's all being done with how do we minimize any disruption through the works with the customers involved. 
And I'm going to have to jump into another visit soon, folks, because we've also got to be sympathetic to what was living here, Steve, don't we? And I spoke to some of the uh, ecology team here that have been actually taking adders to some new homes, folks, but even using technology like GPS that we use in the actual industry to say where they've gone to then perhaps bring them back in the future. That is another critical part, the ecology and the archeology, span isn't it? So this area has been habitated by people from back to the Iron Age. Right. So we've got Iron Age uh, artifacts here. We've got Romans that have been here. There is real old history under our feet. So what we've done is there's a huge ecology and huge archaeology investigation before we even get anywhere near doing major construction. We found some bits and pieces but nothing out of keeping of what people expect. There is throwing one or two things up and those artifacts ultimately will be given to local museums to be displayed for people to come and see. And that's really important because you know we could discover something here but it's part of now that the whole process of what you have to go for before we even say that this is you know dig ready which is what i like to see the diggers in the background that's why we stopped here folks but you know from that point on what we've got now is the ability to understand and map the actual road that we're going to put into to this big project and we're doing a lot of it offline folks that's significant, isn't it? Because we've got a bottleneck at the moment. We don't even want to make it more bottly neck, do we? So one of the key things we're doing with this scheme, and you know, credit to the guys from Kia who who thought through the logistics of how do we keep this. At the moment, coming up the hill, you've got two two lanes, and going down, you've got one lane. Yep. We will keep two lanes up the hill all the time. Wow. And, and a single lane down, and then we will progressively open it, open the hill up. But as best we can, we're minimising the disruption on the travelling public and our customers that use this road day in and day out. Now, folks, the other thing that I've learned about this project is we're doing a cut and fill. So basically, we're taking earth from one section of the project to the other section of the project. But there was a percentage that I noticed in my research about this. We're, we've got currently a 10% incline. We're going to take it down to an 8% incline. When, when I saw that big lorry full of quarrying material struggling to get up that incline, that is also going to be a big impact on the actual carbon emissions and the usability of the road when it comes through. And that was significant in the planning stages with National Highways, wasn't it? Because we've got to build up the hill coming, we've got to build sub-bases and all the things for, to widen the road coming up the hill, why not use the material we win mm. on site, move it, so that's going to help us considerably. The volume of the materials that's being used, I think it's over a million cube. Wow. That's being shifted from one part of the job to the other. The cut, I think, at the top of the hill here is circa 20 metres in, in, in its actual thing. And that's going to be blended in because it's cutting through the Cotswold rock. Yep. It's going to be blended in and it matches the kinds of cut that you see further down the 417 as you head here down towards Swindon. And what was really, again, another critical moment for me when I started exploring this project and, and the team from National Highways said to me, Peter, come and have a look, um, and here, of course, is the fact that we're now looking at how we use technology uh, to deliver this project as well. So people make all the difference. We know that, folks. But we're now looking at the technology that's used with the plant and equipment, with surveying equipment, to understand how we can deliver this, what material sits where. You know, even with the strip backs here, they're putting material in the right place, digging it once, moving it well, and therefore, you know, we're not adding to, to the need to do more movements on site. But technology is critical. We've got 3D machine control in here. We're using ground penetrating radar. You're also looking at how you can monitor the site activity on a day-to-day -day basis. Data, as-built models, all flying around here, Steve. Yep. That's because National Highways have been putting all of this effort into projects like the A14, learning and continuing to learn as, as you move forward, isn't it? Yeah, one of the, one of the things that uh, my previous project, we spent a lot of time and effort on um, design, digital by design. Yep. So you build the thing in cyberspace. You work out how you're going to move your material around. You plan your activities virtually, and then that transposes on to actually doing it on the ground. So you, first and foremost, you're keeping the guys safe. Yep. Then you're efficient about how you deliver the, the, the work. And you do it once. You're absolutely right. Move things once. Measure twice, cut once. Old yep. adage, yep. never fails. <laughs> you know? 
Um, but that's, you know, that's the plan. And, uh, you know, with an area like this, one of the great things we'll use is we'll use drone technology to m monitor and look at the works and see how we're getting on and probably produce some, I hope, some really nice videos over time as to how this road is going to be built. And I think that's also a really interesting point for me here because there's not only the cut and fill, we've got to, to do trees uh, surgery, we've got to move things, we've got to then replace the, those trees that we're going to lose, unfortunately, due to the nature of where everything's got to go. But we can also see how that change is happening and we can also see then the impact of what happens and comes along later down the line when we've got that mapping from the air, haven't we? Yes, that's correct. The key thing with this scheme for me is it's not acceptable to build roads the way we used to build them. Carbon is, carbon's king for us now. Yep. Reducing carbon, we know that road building, concrete, we know concrete causes, you know, there's a percentage of carbon. We know making steel, both are intrinsic into road building. You can't avoid it. We've got some fantastic structures to build to keep, to link the countryside up, to link both sides of the road where currently people have to risk it walking across the road. They'll be on nice structures over the top. We've got environmental green bridges for the animals and the yep. wildlife in the area going in. But they have to be made of steel, they have to be made of concrete. So driving down our carbon footprint through using technology, through clever thinking, through looking at how we're gonna replant and rehide this scheme once it's finished, because this is a, I'll stress it, this is a beautiful part of the world to be yep. working in. It's a privilege to be asked to lead the project in this part of the world. And this is a landscape-led scheme. You know, we will put this road back when we're finished and the planting and the landscaping and the consideration and the sympathetic nature in which we'll nip this road into the local environment is, for me, is, is key. And it's, it's kind of not negotiable. And so what really is a project from the start where we're here today, thank you so much for inviting me to, to take me and my viewers on the journey for this project. We're going to see lots of things happening. There's even some specialist numbers going to come out of this project as it's part of a campaign that National Highways are looking at utilisation of plant. You're doing all of the technology integration. There'll be asphalt projects on here which are new to, to the whole scheme and to the, to the wider environment that we've got around our roads. It's going to be really exciting, Steve, yeah, isn't it? It's... And there's a lot that's going to come out of this that National Highways are going to be able to push forward in, isn't it? If you like diggers and earth movers, <laughs> this is the place to be for the next couple of years. Fantastic. And I'll certainly be taking you here offline as we are, but I'm online with you folks for the journey. Great to meet you. We'll nice be talking you. again, I'm sure. Indeed. Thank you.